In this video, I'll be showing you my top takedowns against the cage in a sequence. As you can see, it's all about being persistent and not giving up on the takedown. It is usually pretty difficult to get a takedown in one go. Everyone knows how to defend a takedown nowadays, so you'll have to attack with one takedown, then transition to the next takedown, and when your opponent defends that, you go back to the previous takedown, or you go for another takedown when your opponent defends, and you keep going until you take your opponent down. So the first takedown against the cage, in my case, the wall mats, is the double leg takedown. Not always the case, but most fighters will start a sequence of cage takedowns with the double leg, and then transition to another takedown when it fails. You'll see fighters either shoot for a double leg from space and run their opponent into the cage and finish the takedown, or they will pressure their opponent until they are against the cage and then shoot. So to perform, change levels and push off your rear leg as you drive your shoulder into your opponent's stomach and grab behind your opponent's knees, one arm on each leg. If you can get in on your opponent's legs before they start sprawling, you can pull their legs right out underneath them. Sometimes, if your opponent isn't widening their base with their legs, you can connect your hands with an S grip or gable grip and pick them up to finish the double leg takedown. Oi! The next takedown is the ankle pick. When your opponent sprawls correctly against the cage, it becomes really difficult to finish the double leg. So when your opponent sprawls correctly, one leg is straight and the other leg is bent. All the weight should be shifted to the bent leg. So we can reach down and pull out the ankle, where all the weight is shifted to. Now from my personal experience, it works, but I don't have too much success with it, especially if my opponent is significantly heavier. However, I will still keep it in my sequence of cage takedowns as it can distract our opponent for us to go for the next attack. If you can take your opponent down, your opponent will most likely post on an arm and try to stand back up. From here, you can start reaching your arm around your opponent's waist and start looking to grab that posting arm with your free hand. And with the arm around the waist, reach for the Dagestani handcuff. Once you get that, it's pretty much game over. The next takedown is the outside leg trip. So just as shown, it becomes really difficult to finish the double leg when your opponent sprawls correctly. Now because their base is now so wide from sprawling, it makes it easy to hit an outside leg trip. In the previous takedown, we went to pull out the leg with all the weight, but instead of trying to attack the bent leg, we attacked the straight leg by hooking behind the straight leg's knee with our closest leg and pull back shifting the weight behind them. With all the weight on their bent leg and no leg to post on, they will fall backwards. In this example, I kept my arms on my opponent's legs. But what you can also do when your opponent sprawls is to switch from grabbing the leg to getting an underhook and using the other hand to control your opponent's wrist. Then you can work on the outside leg trip. While doing all of this, you want to make your opponent really uncomfortable against the cage by driving the crown of your head underneath your opponent's chin. It works. Remember guys, persistence is key when it comes to cage wrestling. My opponent here was ragdolling me for a good while, but you can see that I did not give up and I kept trying to get back up, eventually reversed the position and hit the outside leg trip. If you haven't watched my video on how to stand back up immediately after being taken down, which is a really important video for strikers and MMA fighters in general, I've linked it in the description box below so you can watch that next. By the way guys, if you are interested in learning these techniques or learning from me personally, I highly recommend you join me at one of my next training retreats with loads of training, accommodations, great food, awesome people from all over the world and affordable yet beautiful countries. Check out the details in the link in the description box below. And of course, there are always some failed attempts. The next sequence is attacking for the double leg again. To defend the outside leg trip, all you really need to do is hop on your free leg, stand up tall and bring your legs together to stay balanced. When you are standing tall and keeping your legs together, your opponent has no leverage to really finish the outside leg trip. However, because your opponent's legs are close together, we can now shoot for the double leg again by either pulling their legs out from underneath them, or if their legs are close together enough, you can link your arms together and finish the double leg. 
Oi. Sequence five, we shoot for the double leg, then we transition nice. into the outside leg trip. Our partner or opponent wrist, stays bounced by getting their legs oh, together, so we go back for the double leg. But our opponent is able to sprawl out again, sprawl, so sprawl. we go back to the oh, yeah. outside leg trip. Someone with good skill, nice. balance, and strength, or just a lot of experience will be able to constantly defend it and make the appropriate adjustments. So, as I mentioned earlier, it is all about being persistent and not giving up. It really boils down to who has the better skill, but also who has the better cardio, muscle endurance, and strength. You will see fighters defend Marab or Khabib's takedowns a few times, but they keep attacking and attacking and attacking, and not only does your muscle and cardio give out, but sometimes you mentally give up. Sequence six, depending on the situation, nice. sometimes I will transition stay from wide, a double wide. leg to single leg. Good, good sprawl, With the single sprawl. leg takedown, you can take your opponent down by running the pipe, by hinging at the hips and throwing your opponent down to the ground as you do a quarter turn. If they're standing tall, you can go for a high crotch by linking your arms around their upper thigh slash crotch and step your legs right underneath them so that you can lift them right up into the air. Almost like you're doing a deadlift. And finally, you can combine the nice, single nice, leg nice. with the outside leg trip to hit a takedown. And sequence seven, similar to sequence three, where you can go from the double leg to outside leg trip and back to the double leg. In sequence seven here, you can go for the double leg to the single leg. And when your opponent hops on their free leg, stands tall and brings their legs together to stay balanced, you can transition back into the double leg takedown again. Oh, yeah. Good, D. Stay low, stay low, stay low, stay low. Ah, yeah. In this example here, I went for the double leg, then I transitioned into the single leg, then I went for the high crotch, then back to the outside leg trip. As you get more and more familiar with each takedown, you can mix them up however you want. My opponent here was training for a fight in these clips. He was in great shape and he just would not go down. I had his back, he was shaking me off, so I transitioned into the double leg but he hip heists and gets back up in which I took his back again. Then I switched to a single leg, swept him to the ground, then uh, into a knee tap. He gets back up again, I took his back, then I gut wrenched him back to the ground. He gets back up again, and finally I got him down with another double leg right at the bell. You can even go from the single leg takedown to an angle pick, like in this example here. And the final sequence and takedown is the body lock. I believe this is one of Khabib's favorite cage takedowns. So the sequence is the double leg to body lock. As usual, we shoot for the double leg takedown. Our opponent sprawls against the cage. So we transition from one arm to get the underhook and the other hand controlling our opponent's wrists. Again, we want to drive the crown of our head underneath our opponent's chin to make them uncomfortable. Then when we feel we are able to, we'll let go of the wrist and get double underhooks. Then we want to link our hands together with the gable grip. From here, we step our rear leg in between our opponent's legs and start turning our upper body and hips, using our obliques and pretty much ripping our opponent to the ground. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below if you want to see me make a video on cage takedown defense. As usual, support this channel by liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and hitting that notification button. Up, 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 up. On your feet, on your feet, on your feet. Oh, wee!